Casey Kane with 75 laps to go leading Tony Stewart and on our pre-race show in 10 laps Kane when asked the one driver he'd like to pass for that first win of his career he said it would be Tony Stewart the one he leads Mike third place battle with Elliott Sadler's 38 he was all but alongside the 12 of Ryan Newman for third and he's got the five of Kyle Busch and the 42 Jamie McMurray and the 16 of Greg Biffle all part of that equation and you nailed them Mike that's a battle right there man they have been all over each other but yeah while they've been all over each other you made note of him Mike Greg Biffle in the 16 car he has pulled right up to him he wanted some of that battle Tough break for Dave Blaney cut down a tire had to make a pit stop and went a lap, went two laps down. Let's talk about Kurt Busch, the 97 car right there. Remember the last stop under caution, he had the lug nut that was hung up. And right now his biggest problem, our leader Casey Kane in the nine keeps putting other cars a lap down. So if we do get a caution, he's just not far enough up to get the free pass, get back on the lead lap, and it's getting awfully late in this race. Yeah, he's back there in 23rd place. The first car lap down is Rusty in 16th, and he's done a good job of getting by a lot of them, but he got a long way to go. You can see what a good car he has. He just drives by his teammate, Greg Biffle, in the 16th. He just can't make that ground up. And on the left of your screen, or actually a moment ago, Tony Stewart got right to the back bumper of Casey Kane, but it doesn't look like Stewart's getting off turn two as well as he was a bit ago. Now, I think he is, Mike, but that nine car jumps off of that second turn. I mean, he really nails the throttle hard off the turn two. We talked about green flag stops coming up here very shortly in about 10 to 15 laps. Dave Blaney in the 07, the Jack Daniels car, he was running in the ninth position. He had a flight, flat right front tire, came to pit road, made those adjustments, four tires full of fuel. He can go to the end, but what this group here needs, Felipe Lopez, the crew chief, they need this to go through the full cycle of green flag pit stops or caution would burn this group. They need it to go about 10 Boom. or 20 laps here. Seven car, Robbie Gordon into the fence and spinning down the track. Off and that's going to be four. the caution that Dave Blaney did not want to see because the caution is out. Robbie Gordon, who drove for Richard Childress last year, jumped the cushion in turn four, bounced off the wall, and he will be able to continue after bringing out the sixth caution flag of the night. Yeah, Robbie's been flirting with that, uh, that wall and a couple of times here, and he finally got it. We just see him get in turn three a little too hard. He gets up against the wall, gets all that debris on his tires, and there's no control in the car. He just spin it around. Now, what this caution does, we have about 15 cars left on the lead lap. We have ran almost 100 laps. I feel like that all the leaders will come to pit road. I think they'll get four tires, but they cannot have any mistakes. You can't have a mistake like Kevin Harvick in the 29 had. You can't have a mistake with a lug nut like the 97 had. It'll take you out of this race. Well, the nine cars in the catbird seat down there in that first pit. He ought to be able to get his four, get out, and maintain the lead. And the way that car's been running, he should be in good shape. A lot of laps left and only 14 cars on the lead lap. Would anybody gamble? I don't think so. 100 laps is a long no, way. You, you can't do that here. Steve? Elliot Sadler wants a drink of water. He also said the right rear tire is chattering. It takes about 50 laps, 5-0, for his car to come in. They will make a track bar adjustment on the number 38. Matt? Tony Stewart has a one on the short track since 2002. Says the forward bite was okay on the last run, but he needs the car to turn better. Greg Zipinelli hoping to make the winning adjustment. Air pressure on the 20. Casey Kane, another perfect stop. He stopped exactly where he needed to. This crew that has been flawless tonight. Let's see if they're flawless on the last stop. Kane, Tony Stewart is chasing him. He did it. Kane is the first one out. The side of the nose on that Dodge Charger reminds me of a fish associated with Chrysler's past. It's a barracuda. Barracuda. And it's hungry. Well, I'll tell you who's hungry, though, is this nine pit crew. You can see it right there. The nine wins a battle off pit road, not far behind Tony Stewart in the 20 car. Then the real battle was following this group. You'll see a whole clunk of cars coming here. Ah, new word, clunk. New clunk. clunk. Ryan clunk. Newman, Elliott Sadler, Jamie McMurray, Greg Biffle. A clunk of cars. Yeah, a whole clunk of Sadler coming out, gets hit by a loose tire. Where'd that come from? Looks like it may have 18, maybe. From the left rear of the 18 car, Bobby Labonte's car. But I think where it hit the, the 38 car, I don't think it was anywhere it's gonna hurt it. 
Let's get a State Farm safety update from Jeff Hammond. Last week we talked about how fire is one of the driver's biggest concerns. We see fuel cell behind us with the gases cap pumped to the front of the car by a fuel pump. Now, this is a manual fuel pump that's mounted on most of the engines that have been run here tonight. Now you can imagine when the car slams on the outside wall, what happens if this fuel pump is knocked off, all of a sudden it triggers a fire under the hood of the car and can get back inside the driver's compartment. Well, what NASCAR has done this year, they've made it an option to where you can change and move this manual fuel pump to the back of the car in the fuel cell area and mount it on what we call a waterman fuel pump that is gear driven instead of run off the engine. It's actually driven by the oil pump comes down by the drive shaft to this pump that's mounted on top of the drive, uh, the uh, check valve itself. It pumps the fuel up in the front of the engine. That way, if you slam it in the wall, you won't knock the fuel pump off and create a fire. But the engine does stop. Again, no more fuel going to the carburetor. Should not trigger a fire. Again, this is the one thing that most drivers fear the most, and NASCAR has made a step in the right direction to try to minimize that. Thanks, Jeff. That uh, pump is a great safety advance. And in case you were wondering, NASCAR does not allow electric fuel pumps for safety reasons. That's why it has to be cable driven like that is. 64 laps to go. Will it be Casey Kane, Tony Stewart, Ryan Newman, Jamie McMurray, or somebody else in victory lane? Green flag in Richmond and Casey Kane hauls him off into turn number one. Rusty Wallace trying to get back on the lead lap. On that caution, Ricky Rudd, the free pass car, and three wide, Newman off the corner with Blaney in the middle. And this is going to get busy at the front right here. Right now, Tony Stewart in a 20 car has his hands full of Rusty Wallace in a two. Rusty a lap down trying to get that lap back. And with only 15 cars on the lead lap, that could be big. Yeah, and the Dale Jr.'s right there behind Rusty. Uh, they're trying to fight to get that uh, free pass if they have to get another caution here real quick. With 60 to go, Casey Kane continues to stretch it out. Remember, he's been good on those short runs. He's been good when he don't have to fight traffic. Fighting for fourth, Kyle Busch, Elliot Sadler, and Jamie McMurray. You know, Larry, you talk about traffic, it just appears to me with 50, well, 60 laps to go, Kane's going to catch that heavy traffic right at the end of the race if we stay green. And that's going to tighten things up big time. And the only car that has had any luck at all passing Casey Kane tonight has been that orange number 20. Yeah, we're 343 laps into this race. We know the tension is building. Casey Kane just ran the fastest lap that he has run in this race two laps ago. Well, you heard Doc say that they had the best set of tires they were going to put on that car for this last run. And, you know, barring any unforeseen problems, this would be their last pit stop. This but is Kane's 47th career start in Nextel Cup. Six second place finishes. And and some thirds and on the short tracks this year 14th at Bristol and second place finish at Martinsville Virginia. Remember our pre race on FX when Chris Myers asked Kane during 10 laps with who would you most like to beat? Here's what he said. You could beat out one person at the finish line to win a race. Who would it be? Uh, Tony Stewart. Why is that? Just be nice to beat him to the finish <laughs> line. I, he's uh, he's tough to beat to the finish line. It'd be nice to beat him. Well, they have similar backgrounds, and I'm sure that Tony is somewhat of a hero to Casey Kane. Seeing the trail that Casey has taken, it's the same way that Tony got here. That would be fine, kind of fun, I'm sure. Well, I know who else is a hero to Casey Kane tonight. That pit crew of his, led by Tommy Baldwin, because as Dick Berger has pointed out, they have lost no positions on pit stops. Remember I told you about the driver that had 12 second place finishes before he got his first win. Where did he get that win? Right here. James Harvey Hilton, Neil Bonnet, Kyle Petty, and Tony Stewart also scored their first Cup Series win at Richmond. Casey Kane would love to be number five on this list. 
Well, it'd be a lot of, it's his first win for him if he should pull it off. Plus Dodge finally gets back in victory circles. See the battle right here between Elliott Sadler and the 38 car, Kyle Busch in the five. This is the battle for fifth position. Looks like that 38 car is getting stronger as the night goes on. You know, Elliot told me that they went, last year they struggled on short tracks so badly that they took that 38 car to Lakeland Speedway down in Florida seven times testing for short tracks. Wow. And it's paid off big time. One big difference between the green flag racing after this restart and the prior ones is that Tony Stewart has not caught and passed Casey Kane as he did effortlessly earlier. Kane instead is extending his lead. We just had talked about Bobby Labonte in the 18 car. Remember, he started in 39 positions. He stayed on the lead lap. He just cracked the top 10. He's now in the 10th position. Steve? And Mike, the good news for Bobby Labonte is they struggled early with the car. It went from loose to tight, but now Bobby Labonte is saying they have very good forward bite on that number 18 car. Looks like they've made, made the right adjustments all night long. Steve Addington, his crew chief. And it's right where it needs to be as we have 49 laps to go. Kind of felt like that if the nine car really got after it, he might be able to pull away from ever. Oh, got a car around 77. Travis Quaffle. Caution is out. I'm going to tell you who this caution will really help. Dale Earnhardt Jr., really the eight car, the Budweiser car, back on the lead lap. Gets the free pass. <laughs> He's been on, on and off the lead lap a lot tonight. Seventh caution flag of the night at lap 352 for the Kodak Dodge of Travis Quaffle, the former Craftsman Truck Series champ. He just gets loose uh, in the three and four down here, and the thing comes around with him. Just barely touched the wall. No harm done to the car. No, no damage to the car. Yes, stand, stand. Hello. Call us out. Come on, come on, come on. Call us out. Now, it's only been 14 laps since that restart. We have 15 cars on the lead lap. I just think most of the guys at the very front of the field will stay out. Maybe some of those guys in the back will come in. But just remember, if you restart the race in eight with cars lapped down on the inside, it's like restarting 16th. That's what lost the race for Clint Boyer last night. Here's who's coming. Mark Martin, Ricky Rudd, Jeff Burton. And Larry, I think you noticed I, the nine and the 20 car both were really, really good on long runs. They didn't fall off a lot. So I don't think they needed tires like we did last week. I believe I packed my stuff up, take it to the trailer. Best set of tires I got, what are we supposed to do? Put on the second best set? 